Hi everyone. Let's take a look at problem 3-2a dealing with the preparation of adjusting and subsequent journal entries. Okay, the problem is in front of you. Arnez Company follows the practice of recording prepaid expenses and unearned revenues in balance sheet accounts. Arnez's annual accounting period ends on December 31st. The following information concerns the adjusting entries to be recorded as of that date. Okay, now I'm going to solve these all on another page so the, the screen will flash as I move from one worksheet page in Excel to another. Okay, so there's our blank form. So now we'll go back and we'll read A. The office supplies account, and I'm reading just to the left of the mouse here. The office supplies account started the year with a $4,000 balance. During 2008, the company purchased supplies for $13,400, which was added to the office supplies account, and the inventory of supplies available at the end of the year, December 31st, was $2,554. Okay, so let's jump to that second page, and uh, let's put... Let's record the adjusting entry that we need to make. Okay, first off, the date is December. It's uh, the 31st, and we know we need to record office supplies expense. Okay, and since they recorded them as assets to start with, we need to record um, a credit to um, office supplies. I think I'm going to just put it in column D so I don't have to worry about indenting. So we'll call that the office supplies and now we need to figure out the dollar amount and remember that they started with let's go back they started with 4000 let's take a look we started with 4000 they purchased 134 and ended of 2554 so the way I would calculate that is I would say we'll take the beginning 4000 plus what we purchased, right, which is 13400 That's what we have available. And then we have to subtract out what we have on hand, and that will compute the amount we must have used. Right, now let's just uh, quickly uh, turn these into a uh, comma and with no decimal places. Okay, and then I'm going to shrink these back down, so... Uh, looks about right for you. Okay. Alright, and then of course we're going to write a description and uh, the description would be to record cost of supplies used. Okay. So, that'll take care of the entry on well, the first one. Let's look at the next one. An analysis of the company's insurance policies, I'm reading B now to the left of my mouse, provided the following facts. Okay, so we had three different insurance policies purchased, and the total premium for each policy was paid in full for all months, and the prepaid insurance account was debited for the full cost. And they tell us year-end adjusting entries for prepaid insurance were properly recorded in all periods. Okay, let me give this one a thought now. All right, I think what I want to do is copy something in rather than recreate the wheel in the interest of saving time. So give me one second here and let me copy something. Okay, what I want to do is bring this schedule over. Rather than working this in Excel and taking a lot of time, Let's use this as a guide. Okay, so what have I copied in here? What I've copied in is a schedule of what we know about the insurance policies. We know that uh, the cost per month of policy A is $600 because it, it, it's derived by taking $14,400 and dividing it by 24 months. Then if we look to the left of my mouse, Policy B was was twelve thousand nine hundred and sixty for thirty six months, 
but we only incurred it for nine months of the year and C 2400 was only incurred for five months now let's go back and sort of verify those numbers you yeah, see how on B and C we've started part year so April 1st mean we've got nine months and August gives us August September October November and December so five months and that's where the five and nine are coming in so we're calculating a monthly amount a month a monthly amount and then multiplying it by the number of months adding that all up to come with the eleven thousand four hundred okay so once we have that then we know that on the thirty first uh, we're going to make an entry to insurance expense and we'll make that in the amount of that eleven thousand four forty that we've calculated and I didn't do the calculation in in Excel, but you certainly could, um, and I avoided it just to save some time. And so then we would credit prepaid insurance to record the proper adjusting entry, right? We we used up eleven thousand four hundred of prepaid insurance, and we would say to record insurance uh, coverage costs, something like that. Okay, let's take a look at the next one, next transaction now. The company, I'm reading from C now to the left of my mouse. The company has 15 employees who earn a total of 1,960 in salaries each working day. They are paid each Monday for their, for their work in the five-day work week ending on the previous Friday. Assume that December 31st is a Tuesday and all 15 employees work the first two days of that week. Remember that New Year's Day is a paid holiday, uh, so there will be paid salaries for five full days on Monday, January 6th. Okay, let's take a look at this. First we'll move this out of the way. I'm just going to delete that. All right, so we're going to have an entry on the 31st, and we know we're going to record salaries expense, and we need to recognize the liability, which would go to salaries payable. But how do we determine how much? Let's check our facts again. We know that they're paid 1960 in total per day, and they're paid each Monday for the work assume December 31st is a Tuesday so we want to get um, it looks like two days worth of work accrued and recorded for the month of December so let's go ahead and record that so we would take the 1960 times two days and that's our dollar amount okay and then again we would indent and say something to record accrued accrued uh, but unpaid wages okay I want to shoot back there you know one of the things I didn't do was scroll down and say what was required um, so I'll say that now we're supposed to use the information to prepare adjusting entries and then in part two we will prepare journal entries to record the first subsequent cash cash transactions um, in 2009 that relates to the events that are are stated in C, th C and E okay alright so now let's take a look at D we're through C D says the company purchased a building on January 1st 2008 it cost 960,000 and it's expected to have a 45,000 salvage value at the end of its 30-year life. Annual depreciation is $30,500. Okay, 960 is what it cost. Um, let's get ready and put that entry together. Okay, well we know what we're recording is the adjustment to record the depreciation expense, right? So we have to record depreciation expense on the building. And, um, and of course the credit goes to accumulated depreciation, a contra asset account. And the, uh, the justification or the reason why we make the, the entry would be written as to record um, you know, annual 
building depreciation, something like that. Okay, so now we need to figure out the dollar amounts. Well, let's go over the facts one more time. 960 cost, 960,000 cost, 45,000 salvage value, and look, it was purchased on the first of the year. So that makes it easy for us because we don't have to prorate for monthly depreciation. We know we're going to take a full year's depreciation. So we can take that cost as 960,000. I'm going to do this in brackets here. 960,000, uh, brackets, I mean parentheses, less uh, 45,000, and we're going to divide it over the 30 year life. Okay, so it comes up with 30,500, and that's the dollar amount, and that takes care of the fourth entry we need to make. Okay, in E it says since the company is not large enough to occupy the entire building it owns, it rented space to a tenant at 3000 per month starting on November 1st. The rent was paid on time on November 1st and the amount was received and was credited to rent earned. However, the tenant has not paid the December rent and the company has worked out an agreement with the tenant who has promised to pay both December and January rent in full on January 15th and the tenant says they won't fall behind again. Okay, so uh, 3000 per month, November was paid on time, but what happened with December? It wasn't, so at the 31st we need to record the fact that we earned that rent, right? So we would debit an account called rent receivable. Some businesses might put this into accounts receivable or other receivables, but since it appears that we are partially involved in being a landlord, we'll create an account called rent receivable. And then we need to re record our rent earned. Okay, so this would we would call rent earned, if I can spell it right. Uh, it might even be called rent revenue since we're a landlord. And we need to record just the $3,000 that we're owed. Okay, and again the entry would be to record earned but unpaid um, rent for December, something like that. And this is 200... Uh, let me just say December. I'm getting my years crossed. Okay, then the last part is part two, where we have to prepare the journal entries to record the first subsequent cash transactions for part C and E. Well, part C dealt with the number of employees. So we have to assume that we've got three other days, but New Year's a holiday, so probably we've got two days to record. Let's take a look. No, actually we missed a transaction. F. November 1st, the company rented space to another tenant for $2,800 per month. The tenant paid five months' rent in advance. The payment was recorded with a credit to the unearned rent account. So we've got to adjust for the fact that even though they played, paid five months in advance, three months of that is not earned. So um, um, let's read that again. The payment was recorded with a credit to unearned rent account, so we need to record the two months that were earned. Okay, so what I'm going to do is debit unearned rent keep in mind they had credited unearned rent for the full five months but now we need to record two months of it and it's 2800 times two so there's our dollar amount and of course the credit then would go to rent earned this is for another tenant and let me slide a little bit and we will say to record um, rent earned for November through December. Okay, now let's slide a little bit to give us a little bit more room. On January 6th, we have to record the rest of the accrued payroll. Okay, now we know we already recorded some of the obligation, so we're going to eliminate that, right? We'll reverse that because we're going to pay the full week's amount. So the salary's payable amount is the 3920. Now perhaps it's easiest to do cash first. 
The total amount for paying for five days, I believe, is 1960 times 5. So that should be $9,800. Uh, we're paying five days' worth of salary, whether it's holiday or wages. Salaries payable was already recorded for part of that week, so the balance must be 9800 less 3920 would be recorded as salaries expense. And this is the portion that belongs during the fiscal year of the next year. So it's recorded in January, right? We, al we already recorded the two days salaries expense accrued back here on the 31st. So now we record the rest. And we're going to type in to record payment of accrued and current salaries. Something like that. Okay, I'll slide again to give us some more room. And then our last transaction takes place on the 15th of January when the tenant pays us the money he said he'd owed us, which was, or said he would pay us, $3,000 times two months. So we would receive cash and then we would simply credit rent expense, rent receivable, excuse me, um, because we had recorded the earned portion here, and now he's paid for the both the two months. So we would just simply then indent and say to record past due rent for two months. And that takes care of our transactions, everyone. Thank you.